Do you want to start in 3D printing? Let me show you how. Hey guys, I was chatting to my WhatsApp group and I was asking them what video they think I should do. And I got an overwhelming response saying that I should do something like 3D printing for noobs. So this is my little introductory course into 3D printing and what they're about and what you, you're looking at cost-wise. A couple of years ago, 3D printers were uh, really exper expensive to buy and very difficult to get into 3D printing. There were very few models out there and the models that were out there were very expensive, especially here in South Africa, they were very expensive. Then came a new player in the, in the market called Creality and they bought out the Ender 3 and it's a great entry-level little printer that does an amazing job. It really is a, a, a real great gateway into 3D printing. 3D printing is a great hobby to get into. You can 3D print practical parts or uh, little figurines or stuff that you want to make for yourself and that you can't usually buy somewhere else. And a lot of the times there are practical prints that you can do. And I've got about two videos so far on practical prints that you can go check out over here. And they are about how a 3D printer can be used to create something that is useful and practical and can save you quite a substantial amount of money. Uh, also, if you need to make something else that are reiterative and you need to build something else, you can get started and going with manufacturing of 3D parts, uh, printing for people, and even create a small business out of it. Uh, I usually do it for a hobby and for my channel here, but it is great fun. You know, it is so rewarding to 3D print something that you can use or 3D printing something that is, that is a good ornament or something like this. I've got a good couple of ornaments at the back here. This little marine guy that was uh, asked by a guy to print for him. And uh, it's a great little print here. And yeah, these things are really great fun. On my left hand side here, I've got a FDM printer which uses a filament that is extruded through a nozzle and it lays down layer by layer your 3D print onto your built surface. These are great for things like uh, practical prints. I'm not too keen on using this for a decorative print or a, or a figurine or something like that because it can be the layer lines can be too big for that. But for practical prints, they are absolutely amazing. And the cost of these machines, you're looking at about under $200 for the Ender 3 now. And then on the left there, I've got the Tron Hu, which is a great printer. Um, I love the Ender 3. Ender 3 is my favorite machine, but it took quite a bit of tweaking and playing around with and fiddling and going on user groups to get it to really perform well. The Tron Hu, on the other hand, really came straight out of the, the box. I put it up, I tightened up some belts, and I was going in 3D printing. And the quality of the prints are exceptional. Uh, my Ender 3 and the Tron are getting the same quality prints and they are, they are exceptional and they're great to work with. So, but now what other type of printers do you get? Well, I've got a resin printer on my right here and resin printing is absolutely awesome for figurines. You cannot touch the quality of a uh, figurine printed on a resin printer as opposed to an FDM. The resin quality is just so much better. On my FDM side here, what do I need to get going? Well, we need the printer, okay? You need to have your, your printer dialed in and your bed leveled. Uh, leveling the bed is a little bit tricky, but it's not that difficult. There's a video over here on how to do it. And then you need some filament. Filament is not expensive. And one roll goes a long way. You'll be actually so surprised at how many prints you can get out. Even if you get failures, you can reiteratively print them. And you've got a, a one kilogram spool that lasts forever. It's actually quite amazing how long a roll of filament lasts. You can print quite a, a good deal of good quality things. And one of the things that I loved with the Ender 3 was printing upgrades for the, for the Ender 3. It was really cool that a, a 3D printer could print upgrades for itself. So all you need is the printer, your bed leveled, and your filament, and away you go. Resin, on the other hand, uh, you need your printer. Bed leveling is very easy. It's extremely simple. It's a lot easier than an FDM. And then you need your resin. But here comes the caveat. You need a lot of post-processing after you've done your print. With an FDM, I take my bullet plate off here, and actually it's already fallen off, and there's my print, okay? Uh, this one, I've got a bit of a brim. You tear your brim off and you are done. There's your print, finished. 
with a resin print, I'm not going to do it now because it's far too messy. You need gloves and you need a lot of them. You use gloves like you cannot believe. You need a lot of gloves. You need paper towels, lots of paper towels. Newspapers, I use a lot of newspaper just to put down on my bolts, on my surface so that when I pull the print out and dr resin drips everywhere, I can just throw the, pa the, the paper away. You need masks. This resin is kind of toxic. It's not good to breathe in. I wouldn't breathe too much of it in, so you need a mask. You need your scraper. This comes with your printer to scrape your print form where you need to clean up your fake form. And then you need to post process. Now, I'm using, you're supposed to use IPA or isopropyl alcohol. I don't like using it. The smell is, is really noxious and it gets in. And I've found that things like clean green or uh, those kind of cleaning materials work exceptionally well. You just run it through clean green and at the top here I've got water. I rinse it off with the water and then I can cure it. But you also need curing. You need a UV curing station or you need to put your uh, part out in the sun for a, for a fair amount of time for it to properly cure. That resin has to finally cure. So is, there's a lot of work that goes into a resin print. Don't get me wrong, the quality of the prints are amazing. You know, the figurines that you get out of a, a printer like this is just exceptional and gorgeous and really beautiful to, to look at. To print practical parts is really difficult with a resin printer. Your accuracy of your parts are not as great as, before, as, as you want in an FDM. The FDM is pretty darn accurate. I actually love modeling my own models in Fusion 360, which is not a difficult program to use once you get into the basics. Just to do basic modeling, you can use Tinkercad and stuff like that. But to do basic modeling, I use uh, Fusion 360 and I love using that because you get incredibly accurate parts. You measure it with a vernier, you print it and your part fits. Okay, it's really incredible how accurate the FDM is. And again, the resin is not as accurate, but the FDM can't do models. I don't like doing models on it. You can, but I don't like doing models on an FDM. I like doing models on my resin printer. Printing parts on your resin printer can take some time as well, but there is an advantage over FDM with your resin printer is that when you cover your whole build plate with parts, it will take the same amount of time as if you put one part in the middle. So I recently printed out a whole bunch of figurines for a friend of mine and uh, we printed out one it took three and a half hours i then printed out the bull plate full of another uh, five of them and that took three and a half hours so your limitation with your resin is your vertical not your horizontal or your or your depth you don't have any limitation there because when you fill the bull plate it flashes the resin in one shot and flashes that whole bull plate in one shot and then moves up to the next layer with your FDM, you've got to print out your whole layer and then move up to the next layer and then you print out your whole layer again. But you can tune your FDM to be quite fast. Okay, uh, you get, so this print here took me an hour. That small little man over there took me three and a half hours in the resin print. On three and a half hours of that one, um, when I printed the five, it would have taken three and a half hours. If I had printed five of these on the same ball plate, that would have taken longer. So there are, there are pros and cons between the two machines, but in the end, it's what you want to use your machine for that I feel, me personally, I feel that your resin print is for figurines and your uh, FDM is for your practical prints. Um, and yeah, that's my opinion. I know I'm probably going to get damn basted in the comments below, but that's my opinion, okay? And that's where I like I like to use my printers. I print all my figurines on my uh, on my little resin printer here. Unless you're printing something like a helmet, then you'll need to use a bigger bigger printer. And then in that case, the FDMs are probably easier to use. So guys, I hope this has cleared up a little bit of confusion around the, the machines and uh, made your decision. I probably haven't made your decision easier, have I? I probably haven't. But if you like this video, please consider subscribing. My subscriber count is growing. I'm really excited about how my channel is starting to really develop. And uh, I finally passed that threshold of monetization with uh, Google, which I uh, also with YouTube. And I'm really excited about that. So. Guys, follow my channel, subscribe, press that notification button, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, 
and tune in for more videos coming shortly. God bless and have a great day. Stay safe. Cheers.